Hey guys, I've got a pretty interesting Linux distribution to show you today. This is Manjaro, but specifically this is Manjaro, the BSPWM edition. This is a lesser known uh, tiling window manager, um, and someone recommended, I can't remember who recommended it to me quite some time ago, and I've been playing with it for now for, for a good number of weeks, which is why um, this has been a long time coming. And I've got to say, there is a lot here that um, that is worth looking at here as an alternative to traditional desktop environments, specifically if you're looking for something that runs lightning quick, possibly on older hardware. Um, this could actually work really nicely on things like netbooks where, or, or laptops where a keyboard is like a, a very prominent way to control the desktop rather than a mouse because this, even though it has like plenty of mouse options for you know controlling applications and menus and so forth, it is a keyboard driven environment as are uh, most tiling window managers. Um, it also, because it is built on the back of Manjaro, it means that you do get uh, some pretty up to date software and you've got all of that infrastructure behind you. Um, so it comes together in, in a pretty nice way. It's also, I was also interested to find out that it actually came um, with a compositing, um, with compositing effects enabled by default, which you sort of wouldn't usually expect from a distribution that's uh, that's focused on, on, on being lightweight. But that being said, I have not noticed a performance dip and it does look quite nice. So I've been playing around this for a couple of weeks and I've made a lot of changes, I've made a lot of customizations. obviously I've kept the, the desktop background the same, I think. Um, so, so what you see here isn't necessarily going to be uh, visually fully representative of, of what you might get out of the box with Manjaro. It's, you know, it's, it's quite easy to, to customize, I'll, I'll, I'll cover that later. Um, there is also one minor bug which I want to kind of um, uh, just, just introduce you to right now, and that is this. As you can see here, the cursor is, uh, it's, it's got a weird kind of artifacting around it. I don't think this is the result of BSPWM, the compositing, or the distribution. I actually think that it might be a problem with uh, VirtualBox, which is the virtual machine I'm actually running this in. Um, I upgraded VirtualBox halfway through testing this out, and that's when the problem came about, and, and I think that it might have just been the, the update process didn't completely, you know, connect in with something in the installation of Manjaro. So I'm sure a reinstallation would actually fix that problem, but considering I've I've made a good number of uh, alterations to the config file and um and uh and, and customizations I decided just to uh just to, to go with it. I've tried changing the mouse cursor which is easy enough to do, but um that was that also had a very similar artifacting effect. So um oh I've just clicked there and that's opened up the menu. So that is pretty much the easiest way to get up um up and running applications. This is the applications menu, um, and you've got disks, a rocks term, uh, space FM file search. So you've got uh, got stuff like that. So we've yeah we've pulled up our first application here, find files. So I don't really have files on this. I'm only testing this out as a distribution. But we've got a window up here, and this is this is um, I think it's the default theme. The default theme I think is dark. It gives you um, a choice between arc and vertex themes, arc being flat themes that you see here. This is the um, dark arc theme. Um, there's also a dark vertex theme, which is um, not a flat theme. It's sort of more 3D, more textured, um, but it looks very similar to this. It also looks very nice. So say we've got one window up here and all the windows fill the screen completely by default and, and and the idea behind this is to to make the most of all the screen real estate so you can see here there are no um, task bars or close buttons or anything that doesn't need to be there you've got one task bar at the top here with a menu um, and then you've got your settings and all this kind of stuff um, you've got a few settings up here as well in relation to the window manager uh, you've also got display settings uh, minimize all windows this is the volume second and um, then you've got time settings and all, all this kind of stuff here as well. So uh, what happens then when we open up a second window? Well you can open up a second window so you set like a uh, like a meta key, a key that you hold, uh, a modifier key that you hold and then uh, that basically controls the rest of the environment. So I've set it to the uh, the Windows key, the Meta key, the Super key, whatever you want to call it um, because to me that just seems like the natural operating system multiplier key. So. Uh, what I do if I wanted to open up a terminal and this kind of desktop environment this kind of window manager is really good if you are interested in, in working on the terminal um, and you're going to see why in, in a second um, so to open up a terminal it's it's pretty easy uh, you can change all of these uh, all of all, all of these keys but for me I've just uh, set it at super and Z and I can do super and Z again and you can see that it basically splits the screen up 
your selected window depends on where your mouse is. So it's there, there, are, there are mouse elements to this. You can also select your window by holding down your super key and then pressing the up and down and left and right arrows just to make sure that you've uh, you've got the right one and then of course it's, it's nicely illustrated which terminal you're, uh, you're opening. So if I just type in top here just to give uh, just to, just to fill out the window um, and then you can move to the top one here and um, let's just do I don't this is this is just a command that I'm used to using uh, so we've got listing the disks and we've just got one pretty basic disk there um, so it looks like I mean just it looks graphically really quite nice, doesn't it? I like the shadow effect from the com uh, from the um, from the compositing, um, and I like how it splits the screen up. I like that it's kind of almost got that '80s hacker feel to it. All of this is customizable. The taskbar I've left the taskbar at the top of the screen pretty much as it as it, as it comes out of the box. I think it looks fine. I think it looks perfectly fun functional. Um, even though I'm running this in a virtual machine, there's no delay. There's no. You can even see you can see the output down there. Um, so you can see here. I've set it to have two CPUs. Um, how much memory have I got there? You know, so so you can have a look. The swap hasn't even been broken into it. You know, it's it's very low resources there. So uh, we're not really going to use this uh, find files window. So what's the easiest way to close it? Well, it is Windows key and X, and then it just uh, opens that as you do. So um, what happens if we wanted to open an application that you can't assign to a uh, a desktop shortcut? Windows key and space opens up this um, application selector. Now, these are my most recent um, applications that I've been using. Uh, so Lite is the browser that actually comes with this operating system. And it's actually quite an interesting, um, it's quite an interesting browser because it's effectively Firefox that just runs on um, fewer resources. It's Firefox, but with the uh, with the fat trimmed, which is really nice. I've I've not seen this as a default um, browser in any other distribution, but I've got to say it looks like a really good choice because, um, as I understand it, it is compatible with all of the Firefox add-ons. Personalize your Firefox, and it doesn't. You know, it, it you know, there's uh, oh, golden butterfly. What does so that gives you? Um, okay, I, I don't know. That doesn't seem to to, to work too particularly well. Um, oh, it comes with AdBlock Plus on. Um, oh, so it comes with a few things built in. This is actually quite interesting. Um, and then you've got like yeah, you can put in things like uBlock if you want to uh, block the old ads or uh, or just have a decent host file to make sure that you're not being tracked around. It's it's, it's quite uh, useful for lots of different things. Is uBlock there? So I really quite like this. Um, it seems like a really nice, easy, straightforward workflow. Uh, also, what you can do is, um, if you hold down the super key and shift, you can actually move the windows around. So, there you go. You can sort of move it to the left, you can move it to the right. And uh, if you wanted to change uh, the size of the window, you would just do Windows key and control, and then you could just uh, you could move it out a little bit. Now, um, if I did, is it super key and F? Yep, that uh, that just that makes one selected window just take control of the entire screen, and there you go, it pops back. Uh, this, yeah, this is a really good um, sort of iteration of Manjaro. It's really good if you want if you, if you want something to um, you know to stick on older hardware that's nice, easy, straightforward. If you are a terminal junkie, this is a great way just to. to Put all your terminals, uh, you know, nicely laid out you know, on the screen, so that you, you know, you know where everything is. You can reference something on the left while you're uh, while you're playing with something on the right there. And um, yeah, it just seems to have a really good workflow, specifically for like terminals and text-based applications, but also for um, for just a, for just about everything. I mean, with web browsers, they take up the entire you know screen real estate. That's absolutely fantastic as well. So it's perhaps not a um, a desktop paradigm that's suitable for everyone. I wouldn't want to get a newbie to sit down and work this out. But I mean, you know, in essence, it only took me five minutes to like learn all of all of the the most important commands, and you sort of learn more as you go. I mean, if you were really that um, struggling that much for remembering the commands, you could even put them on the uh, you know in, you sort of implement them on the uh, desktop wallpaper as well. Um, there to 
configure it um, because this is a distribu this is a distribution or um, a branch of a distribution that really does um, focus more on sort of shall we say intermediate and more advanced users um, the configuration and to customize all the parts of um, BSPWM is uh, is basically editing the config files but they have actually commented and laid out the config files in a really quite a straightforward way so if I'm going to just uh, take the mouse here and then select the menu because the menu here also works of course um, and you can um, yeah, BSPWMRC. This is where the bulk of uh, the configurations take place. There's also a startup file. So as you can see here, it's in the home directory, config BSPWM. I don't know if the um, if that's going to show up on the YouTube video because it's very small text there. Um, but as you can see, you can change the panel height. Um, you can change all the padding. There was actually a bit more padding. I've actually gotten rid of the spacing in between the windows just to save a bit more space. And uh, it gives you all these uh, all these options. You can, I mean, you can customize everything, and you can, you know, and it's all done mostly from this one file, including things like startup applications and uh, uh, compositing and uh, sort of visual customizations, all that kind of stuff. And I actually quite like that. Uh, in sort of more fleshed out desktop environments like KDE, like Cinnamon, you have to get a theme, and and you know, from the internet, you have to, you know, and, and sometimes it'll break on an update and all this kind of stuff. And that just that's just that's just something that first of all it's going to put newbies off in a big way, but it's just something that that uh, you know intermediate and advanced users just don't want to do. Theming on on Linux is unnecessarily complicated, um, and 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 the fact that like GNOME when GNOME or GNOME or however you want to pronounce it upgraded to three point two zero, um, it it broke you know it, a lot of the theming as well. It made it it wasn't particularly good at being backwards compatible there, so. It seems like you know it's it's one step forward and two steps back in a lot of cases, but and and maybe we just need to go back to basics. Maybe we just need something simple and straightforward, and that's just a basic config file where we just set out fonts and colors and 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 the size and and that's about it. Um, because then people that are enthusiastic, you know, enthusiastic and uh, about customizing their their operating system, you know, delving through a config file, most of this is going to make sense to 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 a lot of you who don't even use BSPWM. You know, focus border color. Uh, you know, config normal border color. All this kind of stuff. You could just select. You have full customization over the, the theme, and you know, you get you get to um, you know, you get to input it indirectly without having to you know fish around online to try and to try and find just the perfect theme. And you can you can you can completely micromanage it because the thing is. Uh, you know, it is important to bear in mind that when it comes to make you know to to mass appeal. Um, most people really aren't that interested in customizing the way it looks. They might want to change the background wallpaper and 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 and, 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 and occasionally maybe some of the colors, but most people really don't have that much of an appetite to get really under the hood. It's really only the intermediate and advanced users that are, that are really into that kind of thing, and those kind of users generally are going to be more than happy to um, to go down a, a rather simple config file. Also, um, this is gedit, so this is an example of how a GTK3 app looks. It looks real nice, doesn't it? Real nice, real nice. Part of that is the arc theme. The arc theme looks absolutely beautiful, but well, you know, tell me this isn't a good-looking desktop, even if it it looks a bit like an '80s hacker movie desktop. But I gotta say, very impressive, very, very, very impressive, especially coming from a from a window manager I hadn't previously heard of. I'm sorry, I've forgotten the name of the person who has um, who recommended to it to me. I think actually, actually, it might have been someone in the Manjaro IRC actually having a chat about it. Um, nevertheless, two thumbs up. Um, I haven't had any serious problems um, with it. There have been a few. T um, no, no, I've got to say, actually, to be honest, uh, all things said and done, it's been a really smooth distribution. It's been a really, really, really smooth distribution. So... Um, I recommend trying it out. It runs really well in a, in a virtual machine. So if you're not really sure whether or not a tiling manager is 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 really something that you want to uh, you know commit yourself towards, then you know try this in a virtual machine and see see what you think about it. Or possibly even just install it on uh, as a new desktop uh, window manager on whatever distribution you have right now, if it is of course available in the repositories, because it is going to be very very small. It's very very small in size. I don't know exactly how small BSPWM is, but it's 
it's hard it's, it's hardly going to break the bank in terms of disk space so you know you might need to do more configuration and more setting up one of the the real sort of bonuses of this specific spin of manjaro is that um is that it takes care of a lot of the configuration for you so i, I really quite like that um yes definitely worth trying out um definitely want to keep an eye on the fact that it's built on top of Manjaro is, is especially good because that means that they don't have to necessarily release a, a new disk image every, you know, every, every, every six months or every year or whatever. Um, they have released one actually really quite recently, which is good, but they don't have to because you can just install the latest one and then up, upgrade it because all the software available on this operating system is, is what's available for the, the latest version of Manjaro. That's a really big benefit of, of, of rolling distributions. So... Check it out if you're so inclined. I certainly so recommend it. Um, that's about it from me today. Just before I head off, uh, I would like to let you guys know that I've opened up an IRC channel for this uh, channel, for Who, What, Where. I'll put a link to it and the details down in the description below. I'm going to be on it as much as I can. I'm going to try and consider that almost my, my sort of default quote unquote social media platform. I guess if you call IRC a social media platform, I guess I do. I mean, it's social. Um, so if you just want to chat, um, I'm going to try and be there as much as I can. Obviously, you know, I've got work and, and stuff to do, so I'm not exactly going to be able to answer all questions on demand. But um, but I thought I might open it up since many of you guys suggested it and um, many of you guys really wanted something that was, was, that was an open source solution. Uh, and I fully agree. So I thought I might try and, and, and have an open source option for those of you that... Um, that, that want to have a you know have have a more of a social element to this channel because you know with with all the the Facebooks and Snapchats and you know and all this kind of stuff it, it gets a little bit overbearing and sometimes you just want something nice simple basic um, and of course few you know not many people know this but um, IRC actually predates the World Wide Web by I think it's about two years so that's uh, there you go fun fact who says you don't learn anything on this channel so that's about it for me today thank you very much for watching and i apologize for the lack of distribution reviews lately i'm going to try and rectify that you, you should see a good number of reviews um coming up in the uh, in the weeks to come anyway guys thank you very much for watching that's about it from me today and until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome take care now